to the end zone, touchdown. In college, Kyrie Cooper was a star on the football field and on the baseball field. I love sports. My mom and dad both played college basketball, and so it was something that was ingrained in me. Kyrie grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana, and his parents nurtured that love for sports as soon as he could walk. They just put me in baseball, basketball, and football, and baseball was just my love. Basketball was also probably my second love, and I just grew up in the gym. I was always there. My dad played on the weekends. My mom refed on the weekends, and so I literally grew up in a gym every weekend. And we were already a tight-knit family, but the sports was like the glue. One Saturday when Kyrie was 10 years old, he and his father went to a nearby gym to play basketball. He was shooting around just normal and everything seemed normal. And he shot and as he was running back to play defense, he collapsed in the middle of the court. He began to have a seizure and his body was just kind of, um, you know, he had things spewing out of his mouth. and. As a kid, you don't really know what's going on. I mean, you know it's not good, but you still don't know what's happening to your dad. Um, and so that day, uh, my dad died. And so that was literally like the last image I had of my dad was um, him on the middle of the court. And so that just changed our whole family dramatically. But it changed me in so many ways as well. Um, I, I went from this happy-go-lucky kid to this just kind of angry, bitter kid in one day. Uh, my sister was three, and so I instantly became like that man of the house that um, instead of that older brother, kind of that father figure. And so in a way, it felt like it took my childhood away from me. I felt like the Lord just took my dad away from me, a Christian who helped young men, and I didn't understand it. I was, I was at the point where I didn't want anything to do with God. Kyrie carried that anger and resentment into his high school years until it became a burden too heavy to bear. My sophomore year, everything changed. I instantly knew that it wasn't necessarily God that did it. I, I, I stopped blaming God. In that moment, I began to weep, and I began to change that into um, to love, to passion, to fuel that I could use for Christ. And so at that moment, I just began to pray that the Lord would use me. And I began to use everything that I had for my dad in a positive manner and began to speak to kids who had lost their father and began to use that as an avenue to share Christ. Kyrie's positive attitude and growing athletic ability got the attention of baseball scouts and college football coaches around the country. It was definitely cool as a high school kid. People wanted to do interviews and coaches flying down just to talk to you and you're like, wow. Dozens of schools wanted Kyrie, but by his senior year, his list was narrowed down to just five. LSU, Florida, Nebraska, Arkansas, and OU. And then, a scout from the Los Angeles Angels called. We were watching a draft online, and the guy called me from the Angels. It was the fifth round. He said, you know, we're about to take you. And I said, it's the fifth round. He said, I know. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and I watched it, and, you know, they said for the 169th pick, the 2008 drafts, the Los Angeles Angels to like Kyrie Cooper out of Shreveport, Louisiana. And I was just like, what is going on now? Kyrie turned down the Angels to play football and baseball at Nebraska. But being a two-sport Division I college athlete proved to be difficult. It was extremely tough. I would say baseball was harder because you got your, your friends in baseball. They get to play summer ball. They got fall ball. And so they get probably 300 to 400 more at bats than I get in a year. Despite the challenges of playing two sports, Kyrie excelled. But unfortunately, he would suffer a severe foot injury while playing football and miss his final season of baseball. And when his senior season came around, he decided to transfer to the University of Tulsa. And so that didn't sit well at first with a lot of the coaches and a lot of, a lot of fans. And so I prayed about it for a while and I made that decision. Because in my mind, baseball wasn't done forever, but it was done for right now. And the Boston Red Sox were willing to wait. They drafted Kyrie in the 25th round. It was amazing. I got drafted higher than anybody on my Nebraska team that played that year. And so I was like, man, look at God again. Kyrie would finish his college football career at Tulsa and then move to Florida, where he started training with the Red Sox. Started going through physicals and stuff like that. And then uh, I'm just ready to play. And next thing I know, I say, yeah, we can't clear you yet. You know, your shoulder's pretty in pretty bad shape. So I'm thinking, man, that was another thing. You know, I just want to get on the field and play. Kyrie spent two years in Florida working to rehabilitate his shoulder, 
but his injury was too severe and he would be released. It was kind of like a somber ending. It was like a, you know, we'll still pay you for a couple years, but after that, you know, you're kind of on your own. Kyrie began to reflect on his playing career, especially his rehab sessions in Florida. And that was when his true calling was revealed. I said, in this time where I know I'm going to spend a lot of time in the training room with these injured guys, I'm going to try to invest in them and try to witness these guys because that was more important to me than anything is sharing Christ. These days, Kyrie just finished up his second master's degree as a seminary student at Liberty University and says he's thankful for all the trials and tribulations he's experienced throughout his life. I'm still learning, still growing, but everything I've gone through thus far, I can look back and say, I see what you're doing, God, and I'm grateful for it. You know, you continue to follow God's path and you never know where it'll lead you.